Good afternoon. I want to thank the session chairs, Dr. Boutros and Dr. Asani, for having me here today, as well as the program chairs. It's exciting to be back. Um, and today we're going to be discussing extended versus limited resection for splenic fracture tumors. What is the evidence? I have no financial disclosures. That's like seven seconds. All right, so splenic fracture cancers account for about 2 to 8% of colorectal cancers. So the first question is, how do we define the splenic flexure? This has been described as less than 10 centimeters from the splenic flexure or between uh, the distal one-third of the tr distal transverse colon as well as the proximal one-third of the descending colon. And what we know is the vascular supply and the lymphatic drainage to the splenic flexure is variable. Studies have described the left uh, colic artery is the most dominant blood supply in about 50 to 90 percent of cases, with the second most common being the left branch of the middle colic artery. We also know that the middle colic artery is absent in about 5 to 22 percent of cases, and in that case, there is a left accessory aberrant uh, colic artery described in about 4 to 49 percent of those cases. So, what kind of operations are performed? There is a segmental colectomy which involves high ligation of the left middle colic artery as well as the left colic artery. And this is traditionally a transverse to descending anastomosis. An extended right colectomy, which is high ligation of the ilicolic artery, the middle colic artery, as well as the left colic artery with an ileal to descending colonic anastomosis. And the left colectomy, which is the left middle colic artery, as well as the, uh, to the inferior mesenteric artery, resulting in a transverse to rectal anastomosis. So what about the subtotal colectomy? And there's some controversy in terms of the definition of the subtotal colectomy in the literature, and we'll get back to it in a couple of slides. So most importantly, about a week ago, I set up a Twitter poll, and I'm sorry, Dan, I could not for the life of me figure out how to do this on the Facebook group. Please don't kick me out. Um, but asking the same question, for a splenic flexure cancer that is an elective presentation assuming no evidence of obstruction and that it's surgically resectable, how would you proceed? And out of about 560 votes, we saw a variety of responses. The most popular was actually a left colectomy, so this is different from what's here today, followed by a segmental colectomy, followed by an extended right colectomy. And there was a variety of responses to how they would approach this type of tumor, with the most common saying, depends on the actual location. They base the choice on what seems to be the most relevant vascular supply and therefore the lymphatic drainage. There was some more polarizing responses, such as the top one, this is one of those recent topics that people love to debate, and there is nothing to debate. Just do the segmental resection and clear the nodes. That's it. Simple. So basically, debate over. Let's all go home. So basically, this is about as clear as mud from what we can see. So what is the lymphatic drainage of a splenic flexure cancer? Now, this is really important, not only for appropriate staging of the cancer, as well as oncologic outcomes. And the more important thing is, it may not necessarily be about the number of lymph nodes harvested, but the basin of lymph nodes that are collected. This was a really interesting Japanese retrospective study involving the laparoscopic complete mesocolic resection with central vascular ligation for 45 patients undergoing surgery for splenic flexure cancer. And what was interesting about this is that preoperatively, they determined the feeding vessel with a CT angiogram to the tumor and based their operative approach on that. And about 30% of these patients did have evidence of lymph node metastasis, and there was no evidence of metastasis to the middle colic artery or to the inferior mesenteric artery. And they found that most involved lymph nodes were actually pericolic or epicolic. So we're at a SAGES meeting. The first question is, in terms of operative approach, can we do it minimally invasively? Obviously, the answer is yes. And so this was a study that was done as an international uh, multi-center study involving 10 different centers that asked the question of what the long-term and short-term outcomes were for laparoscopic versus open surgery for splenic flexure cancer. And they included all the operative approaches, including a subtotal colectomy or extended right colectomy in this case, 
the left colectomy and a segmental resection. And the reason why this was important was that splenic flexure cancers were actually excluded from prior lap versus open uh, uh, randomized control studies, the most famous being the MRC classic trial because of the variability in operative approach. This was a one-to-one -one propensity score matching involving 130 patients in each uh, cohort. They found no difference in survival or recurrence in every stage of cancer. And the left colectomy was the most common approach for both groups. There was an 8.5 conversion rate in the laparoscopic group, and what they found was very similar to the current minimally invasive studies for colorectal cancer in all categories. The open group had a higher incidence of overall and surgery-related complications. They had similar rate of severe complications, and length of stay was shorter in the lab group. So it begs the question, what part of the colon should we remove then? So this was a challenge in terms of definition of subtotal colectomy or maybe total abdominal colectomy in the literature. It has been excluded from recent studies because it has been defined in different ways. Some have defined it as the, taking the iliocolic artery, the middle colic artery, and the left colic artery, also known as the extended right colectomy, versus an, taking the iliocolic artery, the middle colic artery, and the inferior mesenteric artery, which would be an iliorectal anastomosis. And they, what they found in small observational studies was that the subtotal colectomy in the most traditional form was associated with higher surgical morbidity than the left colectomy with no difference in oncologic outcomes. So there's no consensus. There are small observational studies. Let's do a systematic review. This was a UK study that was done from seven observational studies, including nearly 1,000 patients. And they found that there was no difference in anastomotic leakage, total postoperative complications, R0 section, severe complications, postoperative mortality, wound infection, need for air operation, reoperation, and five year overall and disease free survival. They found that extended right colectomy was uh, uh, harvested more lymph nodes, but there was no difference in terms of adequate lymph node retrieval, which was defined as greater or equal to 12 lymph nodes. There was a higher incidence of paralytic ileus in the extended right colectomy group, and the authors hypothesized that there was noted to be more emergent surgery that was in the emergent right colectomy group, and perhaps this was because patients presented with intestinal obstruction with concern for proximal colon dilation and sequel blowout. The operative time was the shortest in the segmental colectomy group. So this was followed by a uh, multi-center retrospective study in the Europe, including nearly 400 patients undergoing elective splenic flexure colon cancer surgery between 2000 and 2018. And what uh, the different types of procedures in terms of the split was nearly one third amongst the three, but the most common was extended right colectomy. They found that Nearly 75% of cases were able to be approached minimally invasively with a conversion rate of less than 10%. And they found that there was increased operative time, time to flatus, time to regular diet, and hospital stay with increased resection. And that extended right colectomy was associated with increased risk of postoperative ileus. So despite not having emergent procedures, these patients were still at risk for increased postoperative ileus. There was more overall lymph nodes harvested with extended right colectomy, but there was no difference in adequate lymph node retrieval. And again, no difference in overall survival or disease-free survival. You may notice some of these names here may be familiar. Hopefully I will do this <laughs> review justice. Um, this uh, article was a, a manuscript written by Dr. Peng, who is one of the speakers here, as well as our session chair, Dr. Boutros. And this was a NISQIP study uh, is examining North American patients, over 3,000 North American patients who underwent a segmental colectomy or a left colectomy for splenic flexure cancer between 2012 and 2018. And what they were looking at is in the elective setting, whether or not there was equivalent or uh, equivalent oncologic outcome while maintaining safety. They excluded patients that underwent an extended right colectomy or subtotal colectomy because of what we had seen in the previous slides. There was associated with increased morbidity, slower recovery time, and possibly poor functional outcome. And what we found in these patients that it was similar demographics and comorbidities and distribution of tumor pathology. And interestingly, the segmental colectomy had more smokers. And in North America, 84% of these cases underwent a segmental colectomy. 
Less than, uh, excuse me, greater than 10% weight loss was more common in the left colectomy group. And there were similar rates of laparoscopy in greater than 70% with a rate of conversion just below 20%. There was no difference in lymph node retrieval. The left colectomy, again, was a longer procedure. And there was no difference in post-operative complications, mortality, readmissions, length of stay, and reoperation. And one of the limitations of the NISCOP database is, is that it would not be able to provide long-term oncologic outcome. So these are some more recent studies that were based out of DCR. And these are these beautiful abs uh, visual abstracts that were created. And I wanted to everyone to admire them as well. But this was a really impressive study, nationwide Italian cohort, including over 1,300 patients undergoing treatment for splenic flexure cancer. And they, they uh, compared a segmental resection to an extended right and left colectomy. And this included emergency cases, but when evaluating the emergency cases, there was no difference in terms of no statistical difference in terms of operative approach amongst the three uh, operative procedures. And minimally invasive surgery was included in 57% of all procedures with a 7% conversion rate. They found that a segmental colectomy was associated with a higher rate of minimally invasive surgery and again, shorter operative time. And there was no difference in complications, oncologic outcomes, and five-year survival. This was recently published in the last couple months. This came out of France, multi-center involving 15 centers, cancer centers in France, of just over 300 patients. Again, comparing splenic flexure tumors uh, with segmental resection versus a subtotal colectomy or a left colectomy. This was interesting. They had a little bit of a lower overall lapar uh, laparoscopic approach of 30% for all comers. They had a higher rate of minimally invasive surgery when comparing the segmental uh, compared to what was lumped together of the left colectomy and the subtotal colectomy. And again, shorter operative time with no difference in mortality or disease-free survival or overall survival. The lymph node yield, again, was higher in the extended right colectomy or the subtotal colectomy group. And the length of stay was longer, which was similar to prior studies. What was particularly interesting about this study was is that 25% of their patients undergoing left colectomy required additional maneuvers for adequate mobilization, including a retroileal mobilization or a deloyer procedure to get adequate reach for their anastomosis. And they had a little bit of a higher conversion rate of 21%. So, that was just a lot of data, and I just want to point out every year there's just over 200 studies regarding splenic flexure cancers in the last five years. So more importantly, there's been no randomized studies. And because of the, of the retrospective nature of these studies, it seems that all the studies were based pretty much on surgeon preference. But what we can summarize is extended resection does not seem to provide clinical benefit. So where do we go from here? And this is my approach towards exercise. Why do more to achieve the same result? So we know that the splenic flexure, vascular supply, and lymphatic drainage is variable. We know that most of the involved lymph nodes in splenic flexure cancers are paracolic, and this is important for operative management. Yes, we can do it minimally invasively. So a submental colectomy has shown to have higher rates of minimally invasive surgery with no difference in oncologic outcomes on survival. And where to go from here is that potentially considering things like a preoperative CT angio or intraoperative ICG may help distinguish vascular supply and lymph node drainage, which may help us provide better operative planning. And in terms of what I do, I currently do a segmental colectomy and an omentectomy for T3 or T4 tumors and or unfavorable pathology. Thank you. <laughs>